Do you know your sleep animal sign? Your chronotype? Are you a bear? Are you a lion? Are you a dolphin? Or are you a wolf? What time should you wake up? What time should you get to bed? What routine should you do in the morning? What routine should you do in the evening? You see CEOs like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all these different high performers, whether it's Tim Cook waking up super early in the morning, you have Jeff Bezos waking up at 10 a.m., but they all seem to be productive. So what's the answer? And what's the answer for you? In this quick video, I'm gonna show you the exact schedule for you to follow that is customized to you, your biology, and your genetics. Let's dive into it. Okay, so here's what you need to do. If you're a morning person, you need to follow this schedule. If you're a night owl person, you should follow this schedule. I'm gonna put the link for each of these down in the description below for you to access, but I'm gonna give you bonuses here that you will not have otherwise, and I'll tell you exactly what to do for each. Now first, how do you find out if you're a morning lark or how do you find out if you're a night owl? There's two different ways. The first way is you can go to thepowerofwangquiz.com and find out by questionnaire, it takes you five minutes. Are you more, more of a nighttime person or are you more of a nighttime person? Morning time or nighttime person? The best way to do this though is to test and not guess. It, doing the quiz is better than not doing anything at all. But if we can do a genetic test, Based on your genetics, whether you take the test at two years old or 90 years old, it's going to tell us the same results. It's your genetics. They always stay the same. But if you take a genetic test, it's going to tell us, are you more of a morning person or are you more of a nighttime person? And if you abide by a morning routine, an evening routine, getting to bed, waking up based on what your genetics actually want and honor those, it is going to reward you in more ways than you can possibly imagine with your energy, with your focus, with your flow, your creativity, and your overall performance each and every single day. If you do not abide by it and you're working against your biology and against your genetics, it is not going to reward you. It is going to cause you to feel more tired than you could be. It's going to cause you to feel potentially more brain fog than you could be and just not feeling like the 10 out of 10 version of yourself. Some people swear they're a nighttime person. Sometimes people swear they're a morning time person. The thing is this, you can adapt to anything for if you did something for over a year, you can easily adapt to that. So it's possible that genetically you're a morning person, but for years you've trained your body to stay up late. And we'll sometimes see this, what a schedule someone's doing and what their genetic test actually shows is a mismatch. And they'll say, Riley, I swear I'm a nighttime person. I've done that all the time, but they just got used to it. Our bodies adapt very well. But once we change and match with their environment, with their morning routine, with their evening routine, what they're doing throughout the day, with what their genetics actually want, it takes about a couple of weeks, but within two or three weeks after that, they unlock everything and the floodgates open and they start feeling better than they ever have before. So this is what we want to look at. Ask me if you're looking, if you want to, if you're interested in getting the genetics done, I can get a test kit sent directly to your house. But in the meantime, um, how do we optimize your chronotype for the morning lark? Well, the first thing is, Usually the typical morning lark will wake up at about 5.30 or 6 a.m. If this is not you, fine, but we're just using it as a general roadmap. You wanna look at like the different times, like after you wake up for each of these activities, how much longer. So an hour after, two hours after what you do upon waking. But well, let's just say for this example, 5.30 a.m. is the wake up. When you first wake up, we wanna look at big picture planning and meditation. This is very good because while we're starting with that theta brain state, we're very receptive to brain hypnosis and really visualizing and also rewiring our brain for success, what we want that day. So big picture planning, what do we have to do? What are the, the, what's today, one month, three month, five years look like ahead. If we're planning this and looking at this all the time, and we have this true goal ahead, and we're really on that mission, it is going to help us so much with clarity throughout the day. Also meditation, there's different kinds of meditation. You can look at the honest guys on YouTube, which is great. Um, they have a, a, a one that I believe is 18 minutes. There's waves in the background. Uh, it's one of the favorites of my clients that listen to it. You can also stare at a wall with your eyes open, your eyes closed, a lot of different variations, but try and focus a minimum meditation for 10 minutes, ideally do 20 minutes a day. The next thing is it depends if we're eating breakfast or not. If our body and our hormonal system is not very good, again, we can see that from testing. We usually do not want to skip breakfast because that is a stress on the body. Yes, intermittent fasting is good for certain kinds of people, but if it's causing the body to be more stressed than it should be, especially if we add an external stress like work deadlines and everything we have to do, then it's really not that good and we shouldn't fight through it. It's going to take a couple of weeks for our body to adapt, adapt to that either way if we start fasting, if we were used to eating breakfast before, but not everybody is prone for that. But if you can do the fasting, then that's great. 
So once we skip breakfast, we want to first wake up within one hour of awakening. We want to have one liter of water. The reason why is because within, uh, while we sleep, we lose about a liter of water from our breath alone. So because of that, we want to rehydrate right away. And there's a lot of toxins that can build up in our body. And we just want to flush that all out. It's a bonus if you can put in some pink Himalayan sea salt or Celtic salt. Again, check with your doctor, especially if you have high blood pressure. Um, but that is very good. It has potassium and sodium, which is good for our brain. It replenishes our body. It rehydrates it and so much more. And it's very good for our, our adrenal and hormonal system and our stress system. Also putting in half a squeeze of lemon inside of there is great. So warm water, some pink Himalayan sea salt, and we can also put in some squeeze lemon there. Stir it all around. Drink it. You're going to notice the difference right away. Again, energy. Only then should we have coffee 90 minutes after we wake up. I told you that we're dehydrated when we first wake up. Typically, a lot of people go straight to coffee, which is a diuretic, and it's actually going to dehydrate us even more. It, it gives us a temporarily dirty high of energy, but it's not good for our long-term source of energy. We want clean energy throughout the day. This will be another video for another time, but just have coffee 90 minutes after you wake up minimum. Don't have it before that. Next is for some of us, best sexual performance, 6 30 AM seems to be the case for morning larks. They're usually too tired at nighttime. After that morning routine, we'll get things started. So probably around 7 AM, um, whatever that looks like breakfast, feeding the kids, doing our morning routine, going for a walk outside, exposing your eyes to sunlight, um, maybe doing light yoga exercise, maybe going for a workout, uh, first thing in the morning. If that's better for our schedule, ideally it's better to do it later in the day. It's better performance. Um, you get the point though. Now for somebody that is a morning lark, their peak mental performance is going to be a few hours after they wake up. This is typically going to be between a 10 AM and a 12 PM window. What that means for you is, is you want to save your highest cognitive based task. If you are morning lark during this time in the morning and how you can find this out is to ask yourself if you were to write a 2000 word essay, or if you were to give a big presentation, or if you had to do something that required a lot of mental bandwidth and you had one time of the day to choose it, um, when would that be? And if it was going to be in the morning, then chances are you probably are maybe a quote unquote train morning lark, but a natural morning lark would really like this time for them to do this. I'm a morning lark, for example, and my peak performance times are between 10 AM and 12 PM. And so during these times I will save things, for example, if I'm writing, you know, different presentations I'm about to give to someone or whatever the case is, but I block up this time and I have no meetings at all whatsoever. I only save meetings for the afternoon, which will be creativity time. And, you know, when you talk with people, yes, there's brain power involved, but opposed compared to tasks that, that involve a lot of that high cognition where you have to write things or you have to, you know, make complex deliverables. That's where this is very important. So if you honor this and you balance your energy rhythms throughout the day, your body is going to honor you, honor it that much more. And you'll find yourself getting more done with less perceived effort. Next after that, the sun is very important. I've done this in previous videos, why sun is so important to get into our eyes. And we ideally want to do this when we do wake up, if we are morning lark, depending on where we are in the world. But we also want to expose our eyes to sun around lunchtime. So this is also a good time to take a break. We can go for lunch. We can walk outside, try and expose our eyes to the light. Don't wear sunglasses. And trying doing that for 10 to 30 minutes, ideally 10 minutes minimum, will will help recharge our body and do that more active reset opposed to just like a passive recovery. We want an active recovery. So when we go back to work for that session in the afternoon, we're just going to be that much more productive. So we really want to take advantage of those times. The next is creative thinking. So this is this could be something like planning your week. It could also be for example, uh, meetings that you potentially have. I like to plan my meetings in the afternoon and I'll block out my late mornings for the things that I need to do. And it just sets up the day so much easier. And then once the meetings are done, then my day slowly winds down where I can then start whether I want to go to the gym, plan time with my girlfriend or anything else. That is a great time to do that as well. The next is exercising and going to the gym. So they've done many studies and again, everybody is different, but especially for morning larks, their best physical performance time is going to be between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. This is if you're looking to lift, if you're doing, if you're a male, you're doing strength training, um, or you're looking to do high endurance, anything that requires that high intensity, and you're looking to maximize that output. Going to the gym first thing in the morning is great. And CEOs do it, they swear by it, it seems productive. 
and that's fine. But if you're looking to really maximize your energy output during the day and probably maximize your gains or your performance in the gym, if your schedule allows for it, or if you can move some things around, doing between 3 and 5 p.m. is going to be essential for you. I can't recommend it enough. Now, what's nice with that time is after we come back from the gym, now we're going to be hungry and our muscles are going to be wanting some food to refuel. And it's also very good because it's known as carb backloading. And what carb backloading is, is when we have carbs and it's going to help um, release um, some serotonin to help us feel good, to feel relaxed. And also uh, serotonin is the precursor to melatonin. So it's going to help us feel sleepy. So here we are. We got all this work done. If we're a morning lark, we got the meditation down we got the morning walks in we rehydrated we took took a coffee we could do it we ate breakfast if we required it and then we started getting all the peak um performance uh works stuff we had to do between 10 a.m and 12 p.m then we had meetings then we started to wind down then we did the physical activity now we ate now we're starting to wind down we're starting to get sleepy before bedtime into the evening this is a great schedule throughout the day that really honors our biology just as a rhythm starting from very high productive you know probably very fast erratic brain waves going down more into that relaxation mode and it really primes yourself for bedtime and if we do this day in and day out our body loves consistency the rising and the falling of the sun um honoring you know the light processes how much our body's you know experiencing light going into it et cetera, et cetera um is very important as well so if we can have dinner then let's say around 5 p.m or 6 p.m it's going to refuel us and with dinner this will be a video for another time but we want to have one protein one carb one fat one seasoning and we want to have most of our carbs later on in the day sweet potatoes and white rice are my favorite and then uh not only having protein and forms of good fat like avocado or eggs something like that in the morning time if we are not fasting this will really help with your performance as well it has to do with blood sugar and other things we'll talk about that in another video then what we want to do is when we're winding down between 6 p.m and 9 p.m well, we want to do, you know, our um, eating routine. So sometimes here I might just finish up a little bit of light work if I have to. I'll probably take an hour max to do that. But ultimately, I really want to start winding down and going to that rest and digest mode so I can prime myself for sleeping. Because the more that we invest in our sleep tonight, it is going to pay dividends for the next day. And the more that we don't invest in our sleep, then we're not going to get those dividends the next day. So keep that in mind. So planning the next day, um, visualization, um, writing things down in our journal, anything that comes to mind um, an hour before sleep, we can really, anything that's in our mind, we can really just um, remove it from our brain and put it onto a piece of paper. That way we have more bandwidth in our brain to actually process things during the night. And this can help us sleep better as well. And lastly, um, eating routine, one to two hours before bedtime, we want to put on blue light bucking glasses. And then we want to... Um, remove all light filters, and then ideally an audiobook if we can, or some kind of a meditation, progressive muscle relaxation, or anything like this. So this is ideally for a night owl, or excuse, sorry, for a morning lark, getting to sleep between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. is and 10:30 p.m. I would say is the latest for these kind of people. The next is the night owl. They're a little bit different because now the schedule shifts about 30 minutes later. Now this might be you, and the same thing applies where. Um, the schedule for a night owl will be 90 minutes later, like I said, but a couple things shift and ideally you don't know this unless you test your biology on it, but 70% of the population is a night owl. 30% is a morning lark. So the odds are you are more of a nighttime person and we want to honor that. But if you're more of a nighttime person and you're waking up early to get to work or do these other things, you're really not honoring your biology. Instead, if you're able to sleep in a little bit more and maybe potentially stay up later, or even worse, if you're staying up later, but you have to get up earlier anyway, and you're sacrificing one or two pieces of sleep, that is definitely going to impact you the next day, especially if you need coffee and other things like that. But most wake up at about 7 a.m. Um, and again, the same thing applies. So morning routine, 7 a.m., you know, breakfast could be like high protein, high, high, high carb, ideally no coffee if we don't need it. And then around 9 a.m., we'll organize and prepare for our day. So team meeting, stuff like that. Around 11 a.m., we'll take, you know, it could be a coffee break or no snack. Um, whatever that consists of that it looks like for you. A lot of this morning stuff for the night owl, I've seen a lot of variation with. So take some of this with a grain of salt. 
But what's really important is usually between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. These are busy tasks and they're not really mentally stimulating. So you can use these times for your meetings or for create, you know, creative-based work, things that don't take a lot of your, your brain capacity to, to, to execute, basically. Once that is done, we still want to do the same thing of, you know, exposing your eyes to the light, going for outside walks, um, exposing our um, sun to light between 10 and 30 minutes. So that same thing still applies. Still around roughly the same time. It's going to be a little bit later, though, between 1 and 2 p.m. in that case. But now the peak performance of the night owls is going to be shifted a couple hours later, a few hours later. It's going to be between 2 and 6 p.m. So in this case, we really want to save this window for our highest priority task, for the things that we want to block really out, out all the outside world. There's an application called brain.fm too. You can really use to really focus and get inside of the zone. I highly recommend it. And what you can do is turn that on for about three to four hours and do a condensed time window of focus work. And it's kind of the thing that's on your list that wants to two things that you really don't feel like doing, but you know, it's going to create the most amount of leverage inside of your day. Um, whether that's, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, that's building a VSL or if, you know, if you're working a nine to five job, it's that project that, you know, you have to finish, but you keep putting off, it's working on those things. And so if you can put those hours where there are no meetings, I know this is a four hour window, but try and allocate at least one hour. If you can to work on those things, you will notice a difference in your productivity big time. The next is, dinner and socializing. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention with the, um, the night owl is this is also a time for peak, um, performance as well. So between two and 6 PM is the mental peak performance, but right after that is typically the peak physical performance. And that's between usually six and 7 PM that I've noticed with night owls. And so compared to like a two and 3 PM window or a three and 5 PM window for morning larks. We're shifting that up by about one or two hours. Again, we don't want to work out between be around three to four hours before we go to sleep. Ideally that is definitely going to affect our sleep patterns, but if we can do it before that window, that would be most ideal. Again, best sexual performance usually around nine o'clock, but dinner and socializing, it's that same thing that still applies. So right after we finish from the gym or whatever that physical exercise is, we want to eat a meal that's high in, higher in clean carbs, high in protein, high in fat, and getting the right seasonings on there as well. Next is 9 p.m. will hit sexual activity or you start your evening routine. Right after that is where we get into the no screen zone. And so this is where we'll journal, we'll meditate, we'll start to really unwind and we'll go into that rest and digest mode. And I, again, ideally we want to make it so we're not looking at our screen for one hour. We want to turn off that screen. Sometimes we can do a Kindle. We can do an ebook, putting those blue light blocking glasses on so we can keep those melatonin levels very high. And what's very interesting is when we suppress uh, melatonin from the blue light, we're going to get a second wind and we're going to start to feel more stimulated later on. But what's interesting is when we start to wear blue light blocking glasses, uh, we will get sleepier earlier. And that is our body's natural rhythm when it should be going to sleep. It's only because we, we, our eyes are so are, are seeing this blue light, suppressing our melatonin levels. It kind of gives us this false sense of when we're actually really tired. What's interesting is when we pop them on, sometimes people are tired one or two hours earlier, and that's when we should be honoring our bodies actual bedtime. And when that happens, you will sleep so much better, especially if you're consistent over the days, weeks, and months ahead. And again, it's like the dividends principle. It's going to pay you back the next day in more ways than you can imagine. So that's everything with the morning lark and the night owl. Again, the best way to figure this out is to test, but it's very easy that once you know what you actually are, that you can start experiencing the benefits. Again, if you're looking to get that testing done, definitely let me know. If you were looking to get both of these, I'm going to put it down in the comments um, down below or in the description. You can check out. I hope you get a really good sleep tonight. I hope you honor your biology and I hope you kill it and execute tomorrow. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.